Welcome back! I'm running around collecting goodies before we move on to the next area, and in the last video, I went and saved the old woman in North Clocktown at 12 a.m. on the first night. Now, if you did this with me, then on the next day, you'll be able to enter the bomb shop in West Clocktown, and she will have successfully brought her new products here. In general, you can purchase the regular bomb bag, which allows you to carry up to 20 bombs, but since we saved her, they now have the big bomb bags available, which hold 30 bombs. It costs a somewhat hefty 90 rupees, but it's well worth it, and this way we skip to the level 2 bag, we don't even have to buy the first one. From this point on, you'll be able to find and use bombs. Everybody likes blowing things up, right? Now I'll explain more about how to use those later, though. For now, you want to run to the Swordman's School, which is in the northern part of West Clocktown, so it's just north of here. And this building acts as an optional sword training area once you are no longer in your Deku Scrub form. And it's kind of hidden in the corner of the town, so I think a lot of people just kind of scoff at it when they see the sign and ignore it. Either that or they never see it to begin with, they don't even know it's here. Uh, but anyway, he has two courses available for us, and the first one is just explaining how to perform your different sword slashes and such, but... The expert course is a challenge to get the most amount of points. So you want to fork over 10 rupees for the expert course and you'll begin immediately. There two logs will appear at a time, and the goal is to get your sword out, target one of them, and then press the A button to perform a jump attack, which will split the log in two, and it grants you three points apiece, which is the highest amount you can get. You want to do this to all of them and you will get the prize. It's kind of a stupid challenge, really. It's not hard at all, but you do want to make sure that you do it correctly, because if you mess up, then you'll have to start all over again in order to get the prize. So you, what you want to do is target it, and then wait a moment so that Link is fully facing the log. Otherwise, if you press A button before he's fully facing it, then he'll like jump attack to the side, and then you'll have to just try again. So it's kind of annoying, you have to like Z-target it, and then wait a moment, and then do it. So it shouldn't be hard for you at all. Anyway, once you have successfully jumped attacked all of them, then you'll easily get the full 30 points, and he will reward you with your fifth piece of heart in the game. Next, we have some nifty stuff to go grab out and turn in a field. You want to take the northern exit and then whip out your blast mask and big bomb bag. The mask allows you to make your head explode, quite literally. And what a skill to boast about, right? It hurts you, as should be expected, but there's a trick to doing this. If you hold the R button and to use your shield and then use the mask with B, the explosion will be deflected and you won't take any damage. This is because the explosion is technically right in front of you. It's not actually on in the center of Link. It's like right in front of him. So this is simply awesome. It's a free instant blast that will damage enemies in an area around you, and you can do it quickly. You don't have to wait for the bomb to explode. Now the only catch is that you're going to have to wait for the mask to recharge, so you should take off the mask when you're not using it, and then slash it around with your sword, and then put the mask back on occasionally. So it looks solid when it's ready again, so you'll know uh, when you can use it. It's a very effective form of attack for about the first half of the game, so I highly recommend you take advantage of it and try to use it often. Regular bombs can also be defended against with your shield, so feel free to lay those down right in front of you, and then stand real close to your enemies while using your shield. Anyway, go down the ramp, and during the day you'll find Dodongos. These enemies come in different sizes in this game, and the larger ones are fairly difficult just because they're so hard to work around. They're vulnerable from any direction with bombs or the blast mask, so that's great, and it makes them quite a bit easier. Otherwise, the only way to hurt them for now is to use your sword, and I'm just showing here how that works, but they spin around in a counterattack when you hit them, so be sure you back away from this so that you don't get hurt, hit with their tail. They're pretty straightforward, and it does take a while, though, using this method, and in most of the Zelda games, it is possible to get a Dodongo to swallow bombs, and the only exception thus far is Twilight Princess, in that one you actually shoot arrows at them, but anyway, while it is possible to get a bomb to go inside their mouth and have them swallow it, which deals a ton of damage to them, it's incredibly hard to time it correctly. Uh, so here's a short clip of me that I recorded in the corner, uh, but the trick is to toss the bomb right in front of them so that they walk into it, and you have to do it like right in front of their mouth so that they walk it towards it, and you have to position yourself perfectly, so don't be surprised if it takes you four tries, or forty. Hmm. So, once you killed a bigger Dodongo, it will leave behind a purple rupee, which is worth fifty. Nice. There's also a smaller variety of the Dodongos in this area, and while they take fewer hits, they also leave behind fewer rupees when defeated. Aww. Now underneath one of these stone mushrooms here, there's a hole in the ground. You want to fall down it to find an underground cavern with two large Dodongos. This can be a bit dangerous to take them both on at once, so that's why I waited until we had the big bomb bag. By simply tossing bombs at them from afar, you can keep your distance and easily take one of them out before running in to finish off the other. Now one word of warning though, just make sure you don't get distracted by the other Dodongo and forget about the purple rupee that they drop when defeated. They disappear pretty fast, so if you're not careful, you could miss out on a lot of loot, and you don't really want to do that, because we need rupees. Once they've both been defeated, you want to open the large chest that appears to get a piece of heart. 
After that, just walk out of the cave and kill the little Durango in passing if you like, and at this point my wallet is feeling a little plump, so I went and made a quick stop at the bank. Empty it out. I recommend you do the same before we move onward. Our next destination is to head to the southwest corner of Termina Field, where there's another hole with an enemy awaiting us. And here's a little tip for you, you can use the blast mask to blow up an entire circle of bushes on your way. It's very quick and it allows you to fill up on items and health, as well as kill the choo-choos that are often there. And you can do it while just passing through, so it's a simple little trick, uh, but just try to keep things like that in mind as you go through the game, because you'll be surprised at the kinds of strategies you come up with to just do simple, cool things like that. Now in this part of the field, there's three large trees, and in between all of them is this huge chunk of tall grass. Now near the center of this grass, there is uh, some butterflies that are kind of hard to see, but as well as a Deku Baba, which you should find pretty immediately. Now just north of the butterflies, just like a tad, and somewhat between them and the plant enemy, there's actually a hole that you cannot see, but you should find it pretty quick and Link will fall down it. So once you do fall down there, you'll find yourself alone with a new enemy called a P-Hat. These classic enemies have been in quite a few of the games in the Zelda series, and they were in the prequel to this game as well in Ocarina of Time. This is actually the only one in Majora's Mask, which is good because these things are kind of annoying. Now to defeat it, you want to simply target it and use your shield to get close. You want to stay on the opposite side of its spinning blade, and obviously, because it will hurt you, and then just slash at its tender root, which is very easy to do because it kind of puts it in your face all the time. Anyway, but you just circle around it, and then you should easily be able to stay on that side, and after several hits, this plant enemy will explode, naturally. I mean, plants explode, right? Leaving behind a large chest containing a piece of heart. Back top side, you want to slash some bushes if you need some health, and then head towards the exit in the southwest corner of Termina Field. On the way, though, you will encounter a new enemy, which is represented by a red dot that is on your minimap. This goofy-looking bird that's patrolling back and forth will fly towards you once you are close enough and attempt to steal from you. Takuris have been in seen in a few of the games in the Zelda series, but uh, none are as hated as this one, which can steal tons of your rupees, your bottles, and even your sword. So if it does manage to steal one or more of those important items, you'll have to purchase them back from the Curiosity Shop in West Clocktown for a hefty amount of rupees. All this goes to say, do not let it touch you! <laughs> if it gets close, face it and use your shield. Do not try hitting it with your sword, it's just not worth the risk at this point in the game, and there's better ways to kill it later on, so simply get past it for now, and try to avoid it as much as possible. Once you finally make it to Milk Road, you want to run forward and slash the owl statue with your sword to wake it up. It doesn't really matter much at this point, but later on you'll be glad you did this. Next, you want to go run over and kill the bushes to get a few extra rupees if you don't have any at this point. They're alive, so to prevent them from escaping my wrath, I just used the blast mask to take them all out at once. Next, you want to go ahead and put on the Deku Mask and shoot down Tingle, who is hanging out with his balloon nearby. Chat with him and purchase the map of Romani Ranch for 20 rupees. After that, you want to go ahead and run over to the Hired Hand, who is attempting to remove a, the boulder that is blocking the ranch up ahead. And apparently the Skull Kid put the boulder here to disrupt things and cause more chaos. And it'll take this dude a little while longer to clear the rubble, though, so just play the Song of Double Time to skip ahead to the final day, when the boulder will be removed. So the first time you enter Romani Ranch, you'll get a short overview of the area. You can check out the barn house in the center and meet up with Romani as well as your trusty steed, Epona, who disappeared near the beginning of the game. Unfortunately, we can't really do anything with them at the moment, so just go past them for now. In the back of the ranch, there are two doors. You want to take the northern one, which has pictures of chickens on the side of it, and it'll take you to the Cuckoo Shack. And Cuckoos, just so you know, are called that because of the sound they make, uh, according to the cuckoo lady in Ocarina of Time. She claims that they are called that because they say cuckoo! I don't know. Inside, you want to run forward and speak with Grog, the pale guy here who takes care of the chickens. The moon's going to destroy everything soon, so he's feeling a bit depressed. I suppose I would be too. Anyway, he just regrets not being able to see his baby cuckoos grow up. If only there was some way to do this quickly. Hmm. Once he's done talking, you want to go ahead and put on the Bremen mask and hold the B button to start marching around. You want to keep the button pressed in and steadily work your way around the area, marching around and touching all the little chickens. Personally, I think they look like bouncing lemons with eyes. You're probably getting real sick of the marching tune by the time you found them all, but just keep searching and you should spot them all after a while. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that there's these fences that are throughout the area, and they have these holes in the bottom of them, and the little cuckoos can hop through those little holes. So even though you may have checked an area and circled around, the little cuckoo might have snuck, snuck through there. So you could, like, circle the entire area and then look back, and there's a cuckoo that you could have sworn you already checked that area, and that's why, is because they can go through the fences. So it's kind of annoying, just be aware of that. 
So once you've collected all 10, you want to keep the B button pressed in and they'll steadily change into roosters. So don't let go of B, just keep holding it. And once you have successfully completed this task and they've all grown up into roosters, then Grog will explain how happy he is and he will gift you with the bunny hood. While wearing this mask, you will move around twice your normal speed. The only catch is that it doesn't work while you're targeting something. It's great for traveling, obviously, and also for jumping great further distances, as well as closing the distance between foes, in particular for boss battles, so that's kind of cool. Now it seems in general that first-timers to Majora's Mask really favor this mask in particular, uh, becoming an instant favorite, while it seems that uh, veteran players tend to use other masks more often, uh, being a little more creative with their strategies, which kind of makes sense. Anyway, this will complete Grog's entry in the Bomber's Notebook, and that's all we had to do here. So take out that ocarina of yours and play the Song of Time to save. And then join me for the next video where we will put all these goodies to use and start heading to Southern Swamp. See ya.